Hey, what's happening, guys? I'm sure that most of you know what an H-bridge is. But for those of you who don't, so let's say we have a motor. And those are our two wires coming from the motor. What we're going to need are some switches. So here I drew it up. We have four switches, two on either side of the motor. Two are going to the VCC, two are going to ground. And if we turn on oppos opposite or opposing switches, say one and four, then the motor is going to rotate such as this. But if we turn on switches two and three, well, then the motor is going to work like this. Pretty simple concept, right? All we're doing is switching the direction of current flow through the motor. And that's known as an H bridge because, you know, that looks like an H. And there's lots of ways to do this. But I'm going to show you a way today to do it with our old friend, the 5, 5, 5 timer. No, this is not the best way. No, this is not even a really good way to do it. But it's an educational explanation showing you some of the capabilities and possibilities that are available to you if you think outside of the box. No, the 555 timer wasn't meant to control motors, but it can. So we're going to do it with a simple hobby motor. Let me draw up the circuit for you. So, as you can see here, we have two 555 timers. We have VCC and reset going to our VCC rail. And then we have ground coming to our ground rail. We have a pot 10 to 100K. And as we rotate the pot in one direction, our motor will spin in one direction. As we rotate it in another, it will spin in another. So we have our threshold connected to our trigger on both pins, that's two and six. And we have our output Q on this right 555 timer coming to one side of the motor. The other one comes out, goes to this pot, that, the trigger and threshold go to the pot, and then our Q comes out, goes here, and then it feeds into the threshold on the other timer. So how does this happen? Well, when we move the pot in one direction, the voltage at trigger pin 2 here is going to go below. Man, I need a decent pin today. It is going to go below VCC divided by 3. And that's the inverting input of the lower comparator in the 555. This is going to set the output of the flip-flop, and the 555 will behave as a current source. And boom, we're powering the motor for our directional spin, let's just say, in that direction. Now, when we move the pot in the other direction, our threshold, pin 6, goes above 2 thirds VCC. That causes this 555 timer to act as a current sink, and this one to act as a current source that's really all there is to it. It's not complicated at all. So I went ahead and I drew up this circuit and I sent it off to our friends at PCB Way. And they have graced us with some beautiful little circuit boards here. Thank you, PCB Way. Let's solder one up and see what happens. Today's video is sponsored by PCB Way. This is their seventh year in PCB manufacturing. And for $10, I'm sorry, for $5, you get 10 boards in just about a week. You can't beat that. Now, the shipping's not included in what I'm telling you. So depending on your shipping, of course, it's going to be a little bit more than $5. But hey, give them a chance. Check them out. They do excellent, excellent work at PCB Way. All right, let's solder this up. And hope that it works. 
That's always the fun part, right? Hope that it works. Got all our components here. I mean, there's really not much to it. Let's start with our 555s. Five, five, they need to be shaped. Hopefully that did it. Yep, perfect. We'll do the next one too. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Done a little bit of a little bit of the old blue tack on there, right? Right. And we'll solder it up. We're using the new uh, soldering iron today. It's first real test. So, see how it does. I don't have any. any <clears throat> worries about using it. I mean, we tested it out. It worked just fine. It's thick enough that I'm sure you don't have enough thermal mass to do these jobs. Yeah, I'm switching between chips just to spread out that heat. The crunching you hear in the background is, of course, dogly chewing on a bone. So it is uh, December. I'm sorry, it's not December. It's January 13th. Yeah, January 13th. It's almost snowing outside. Like little little flurries will pop down every few minutes but it's it's just right at that temperature it's like 39 degrees and it's it's just barely cold enough for it to snow remember for every thousand feet you go up in altitude you lose three degrees fahrenheit in temperature so you know that snow is coming from say ten thousand feet so it's 30 degrees colder up there where the snow is coming from than it is down here. Well, so far so good. Let's put in our, our power here. Now this will be a good test of the soldering iron. This is a, these are some large, some large holes to fill. Yeah, seems to be doing the job just fine. Then we need our potentiometer. Calls for a 10K. You know, anything between 10 and 100 is going to be fine. Basically, all your potentiometer is doing in this case is behaving like a, uh, a directional switch. So we're good. Need to order some more of those. I was just looking when I was gathering components this morning to put this together. That, uh, Getting short on some stuff, so gonna have to place an order and restock on some of my common supplies. Okay, so the last thing will be our motor connector. Get 
that in there. Now with this, I'm just going to solder one pin up real quick. Don't we'll pull off blue tack. Position this thing where we want it. Then we can solder up the other one. So far, so good. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm going to put my mail header in here. And I'm going to tin it. Remember, solder flows where solder's been. So it's always best to tin, tin, tin. Then we'll solder on the wires for our little motor here. They are pre-tinned, but chances are that that pre-tinning is going to be crappy lead-free solder. Whoops, sorry. Bumped the camera with my big giant head. The BGH gets in the way. And now for something we hope you really like. We shall join motor wires to the motor header. Nope. I thought that was going to do it, but it didn't. How about now? Much better. And the other one. All right. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. All we got to do now is test it, right? Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. Board, blah, blah, blah. Let's uh, put this in one direction. It's our motor. Fire up the uh, power supply. Let's try and get everything in this shot here. And we'll see what happens. So far, so good. Let's uh, switch direction and see what happens then. Oh, damn. This thing's not cooperating with me. There we go. So we got that whole dead zone there. Then, when we switch it in the other direction, it flops off. I'm at the upper end of these. We're getting uh, three watts out of this, so I'm going to kill it. But yeah, that's how you can make an H-bridge out of a 555 timer. Kind of cool. Just a different way of doing things, a different way of thinking about things. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And a big thanks to my friends and your friends at PCB Way. Wouldn't be here without them. That's it. I'm out. Peace.